Hi, I'm going to take up a question from the CEMC Canadian Senior Math Competition uh, by request. So this is from the 2022 edition of the contest and from part A it's question 5. So it is a um, question involving geometry and there's a couple of chord properties that I need to use to answer this question that you may not know about. So that's why it's worth kind of looking at. So feel free to pause if you haven't already read the question. Um, I've read the question a lot. So I'm going to go to my slightly bigger diagram here. Um, so again we have a circle and we know that the radius of the circle is root 19 because we were told the diameter is 2 root 19 um, which is nice because anywhere that I draw a radius line so there's a radius line that's root 19 there's a radius line that's root 19 uh, there's another one here that's root 19 um, and of course you know a to o and o to b are root 19 so working within a circle when you're doing a geometry question it's kind of nice because you have all these radius potential lines that you could use um, we're also told that we have a right angle, so I've labeled that on this diagram, a right angle here at um, point P and a right angle over here at point Q. We also are told that the length of PC is the same as the length of DQ, and those are both one unit in length, so I'm going to label that. Um, I'm, our goal is to find AP, so I'm going to call that X, so I can call it something. And then we're also told that Q to B is twice as long. So I'm going to call that 2X. So that's kind of what I know. I know the radius. I know some potential radius lines I could draw in the picture. Um, but I'm actually going to start by drawing something else. I'm going to draw a line that goes from A to R. So that line from A to R, um, I'm also going to just emphasize the line from R to B because what that what I've just done is I've just created an angle here at angle R um, so and it's got a special property so I've highlighted the diameter and that's because there's a property in circles that says any angle subtended by a diameter is a right angle so what subtended means is that um, sort of the line here the diameter in this case is the other side of a triangle so it's opposite a particular angle in a triangle so here I would say the diameter or a B subtends the angle at R so there is a property of chords that says any angle subtended by a diameter is a right angle and so because that's new I'm just gonna backtrack a little and just emphasize that so um, I could draw a line here from A to C and then from C to B and the angle here has been subtended by the diameter, so it must also be 90 degrees. Um, I'm just not, you know, if I were to draw that, nothing wrong with drawing that. I just don't know enough about AC or CB for me to find that incredibly useful. Um, I could also have drawn it from A, oops. I could also draw a line um, from AD to DB and that creates an angle at D that would be subtended by the diameter and therefore 90 degrees but again I'm not sure how useful AD is to me at this moment or DB that I don't know they're just I'm just creating a triangle there a bunch of triangles but when I draw the line from AR um, and then just to emphasize that that line already existed to RB so that's one advantage um, so here I've subtended a right angle so I know that that's a right angle that's kind of nice um, and what makes it more than just kind of nice is that um, because this is a right angle then the supplemental angle here must also be a right angle which means that in the shape that I'm going to highlight now so in sh this shape here which kind of looks like a rectangle so shape APQR it actually has to be a rectangle because it is a shape with three right angles and if it has three right angles and it's a four-sided shape it must have four right angles and if it has four right angles it must be either a square or a rectangle so a rectangle because you know maybe it's a square but it's definitely a rectangle so now I know that I have a rectangle 
um, in that APQR shape. And because it's a rectangle, I know that this, this side length, AP, must be the same as this side length, QR, which means that QR is a length of X. And remember that from Q to B is a total of 2X. So if that's X here, then this also must be X here. So that right angle was quite useful. So now what? Um, well, now I'm going to use another important property of chords and circle geometry. I'm going to identify a point somewhere. Um, and in particular, what I want to do is ident I want to identify the midpoint of line PQ. And there is a property that says if you, um, so CD is a chord. And if you find the midpoint of a chord, um, then and connect that to the center of the circle. So find the midpoint of a chord and connect it to the center of the circle. Then the property says that the angle they meet at must be 90 degrees. So again, that's one of those chord properties. So I've defined angle M to be the midpoint of that chord, CD. Um, and so it must meet at 90 degrees. And I know earlier I said I was finding the midpoint of line PQ, but because P to C is the same as D to Q, then I could say it either way. Um, and I might need this information. I might not. Um, so hold on. I'm so, I'm, let me just redraw that one second here. Um, so now that I've done that, and I know that I have a right angle here, I'm also going to um, give this length, which would be the same as this length, because M is a midpoint, I'm going to call that Y um, in case I need to write an equation involving whatever that length is. So now I've got um, that right angle up there. And of course, we love right angles because things like the Pythagorean theorem are helpful. Um, and also, if this is a right angle and this is a right angle, well, we know that this is a right angle. So I'm going to give that point a name as well. Um, and I'm just going to use the same um, lettering system that the solution set gives, which is I'm going to call this point T. And it's a 90 degree angle, which means that this is a 90 degree angle. And now if you look at what's happening here, I have this big yellow triangle, um, which I'm going to call triangle ARB. And then I have this other triangle here, oops, um, this littler, littler triangle here, um, which I'm going to call triangle ATO, both of which have a 90 degree angle, both of which contain angle A, which means they must be similar triangles. So let me write that more formally. Just get rid of some of the excess drawings because otherwise the diagram can get pretty messy. So triangle A. RB is similar to triangle ATO. Um, and what that means is that the side lengths are in the same ratio. And we can tell just by looking that A to O, which is part of this triangle, is the radius of the circle. And A to B is the diameter of the circle. And that's A to B. So that means that triangle ARB is exactly two, twice um, the side lengths. So it's all of the um, sides are in the ratio two to one. It's a better way to say it. Um, which means that if this is X units, then this must be X over two units. Hmm. We're getting somewhere. And in fact, that's x over 2, which and this is part of um, that rectangle above. So that must be x, which means I know that the length of MO is x plus x over 2 units, which is 3x over 2 units. So I know the length of that. So let me see how bad it gets if I start erasing. Yeah, I knew that would be bad. So let me bring it back. Um, so bear with me while the picture gets a little bit harder to read, but um, what I'm liking is that, for example, I've got a right angle triangle here, and I know 
that the long side is 2 root 19, and you know that this side is x. And that means I can find an expression for side AR, and if you notice, side AR is the same as PQ. So I can set up an equation. It'll have x and y in it, but I can at least set up an equation that will start the process of doing some sort of algebraic solution. So I can say, let me just get a slightly simpler pen. Um, so again, using the Pythagorean theorem, the diameter squared, because that's the hypotenuse, is equal to a squared plus b squared. And b squared would be 1 plus y plus y plus 1, so 2y plus 2 squared. So that's an equation I can't solve for x and y at the moment. I could do some algebraic manipulation, um, but I don't think I want to do that in the video. I'll leave that for your algebraic skills. So I have one equation involving x and y. If I can find another equation involving x and y, then I can use them to solve. So let's see what else I know. Um, so have a look. This is y. This is, as I said earlier, x plus x over 2, which is 3x over 2. And there is a 90 degree angle right here, which means that if I draw a line like this, I've, I'm just going to redraw it over here because my diagram is so messy. So I'm talking about the triangle that goes from CMO. This is 90 degrees. That's Y. And this side is 3 over 2x because it's x plus half of x, which means I can find the radius. Oh, wait a minute. I just said the radius. So this line here is the hypotenuse of the triangle, which is the radius of the circle. Oh, the radius of a circle. So that is root 19. So that means I can set up a different equation using the Pythagorean theorem that root 19 squared is equal to y squared plus 3 over 2 x squared. Oops. So what I have is two different equations. So here's one and here's two. I have two different equations involving x and y that were found using different triangles. So they're not just really the same thing. And I can now use those equations to solve for x. And, and probably y, but remember the goal of the question was to find x. So that is how you use, well, you know, general algebra, um, Pythagorean theorem, and those two new chord properties about right angles when you subtend from the diameter and right angles when you connect the midpoint of a chord to the center of the circle. And that's how you end up getting an answer for x.